subscribe now and press the bell icon. Never miss an update. Hello and welcome to Health Live at Senior Today. We are delighted to have here with us Dr. Pramod Bhor. Dr. Pramod Bhor is a senior orthopedic surgeon and a specialist in robotic joint replacement surgeries. I will introduce him. Dr. Bhor is Director of Orthopedics and a Joint Replacement Surgery at the Fortis Hirnandani Hospital in Vashi, Navi Mumbai. He is a highly qualified doctor holding degrees in MBBS from the Bharti Vidyapeet in Pune and the MS Orthopedic from Dr. Dr. D.Y. Patil Medical College and Hospital in Pune in uh, 26. Furthermore, he has received specialized training from several eminent national and medical centers, international medical centers. Academically, he's been teaching MBBS and PG students for the last 15 years and is a professor of orthopedics. He has many publications to his name in many national and international journals. He's the first surgeon in Navi Mumbai to perform robotic knee replacement surgeries. Some of the services performed by Dr. Bhor at the Fortis uh, Hindustani Hospital are ACL reconstruction, arthroscopy, hip replacement, and resurfacing spinal surgeries robotic knee replacement and knee replacement. The member of the Bombay Orthopedic Surgery, or Orthopedic Society, the Navi Mumbai Orthopedic Association and the Maharashtra Medical Council and many other orthopedic associations. He has done fellowships in advanced trauma and visiting fellowships in joint replacement in Singapore and Germany. We are delighted, as I mentioned, to welcome Dr. Pramod Bhor for this special session on joint on robotic joint replacement surgeries. Dr. Bhor, welcome to Health Live at Senior Today. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Pradhan Maji. Thank you for the gracious uh, welcome. Uh, so, Kasa uh, Dr. Bhor, how are you? I'm fine, I'm fine. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, will you, uh, you know, the thing with, with a topic like this, Mm -hmm. We announced it. So, what does robotic mean? You know, people are all they think it's mumbo jumbo, mm -hmm. and which is why we thought it would be a good idea to have. We've had topics about joint. We've had sessions on joint replacement surgeries. Right. Very really senior doctors talking about joint replacement surgeries, whether it's knee replacement surgery, whether it's hip replacement surgery, but a focused discussion on robotic joint replacement surgery, robotic assisted joint replacement surgery is what we thought would be good to have. And you as one of the pioneers, one of the you know early doctors to have embraced this uh, technology, we couldn't have had a better person than you to talk about it. So doctor, over to you. What I would request everybody else here is to listen in and those of you who have questions, please put them in the Q&A tab. As always, with your uh, gender and your age, and I will ask uh, Dr. Bhor later at the end to, uh, uh, you know, to answer your question. And you, know, you couldn't have had a better opportunity when you have a senior doctor like Dr. Pramod Bhor in the house and ask, addressing your questions on this new technique. Well, it's not exactly new, but it's relatively new of uh, joint replacement. And as senior citizens, this is something which affects us all. So I think it's it's good that we have had, uh, uh, you know, Dr. Bhor here, and who will, uh, you know, make this presentation. And uh, it's a 10 to 15 minute presentation. And after that, we will look at all the questions. Over to you, Dr. Bhor. So I am Dr. Pramod Bhor. Uh, so I've been doing uh, orthopedic surgery and replacements for the last 18 to 20 years now. Uh, coming down to joint replacement, as uh, um, Mr. Maheshwari said, Mr. Pradhim said, Ke everybody you know uh, what is joint replacement. So joint replacement is a surgery done for osteoarthritis of knee when a patient is having severe osteoarthritis of knee. So every patient is going to have osteoarthritis. So each and every patient with 
who is going uh, having a who is a senior or who has who is of the age about 55 60 has osteoarthritis so does everybody need surgery no so basically patients who are in pain and whose pain is not relieved by basic medicines and physiotherapy those people require osteoarthritis Sometimes for younger patients with uh, secondary causes like uh, post-traumatic or a rheumatoid arthritis, they require uh, 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 knee replacement. So I'm just going to go a bit fast uh, through these uh, slides. So basic uh, uh, investigation that we diagnose uh, osteoarthritis is with an X. Uh, having an MRI, having a, uh, any other CT or anything are extra things. MRI, normally I prefer to do only for younger group of patients whom I normally uh, advise when they have only early osteoarthritis, as in this case we see there is medial joint arthritis only. So when there is only medial joint arthritis, I would like to see whether the lateral joint is involved, the outer, that is the outer side is involved or not. At, the, at those times, I get an MRI when there is early osteoarthritis so that I can go ahead and do a partial knee replacement instead of going ahead and doing a total knee replacement. So a basic uh, investigation of choice for, and you know, any case for diagnosing osteoarthritis is an X-ray. Um, it shows us quite a few uh, things, uh, as in joint loss of joint space, subcontinual sclerosis, and new bone formation, that is osteophytes. These are going to be there with each and every person, though they have pain, and they, if, even if they have pain, even if they do not. But the X-ray picture is not the only thing where we decide whether the patient requires a knee replacement. So coming to treatment of osteoarthritis, there is a huge big scope. To medicines, intraarticular injections, pain management techniques, taping, orthosis, footwear modification. Most important is that they increase the muscular strength. That is the most important exercises, regular exercises. And after that, coming down to surgical uh, ways, either arthroscopy, tibial osteotomies, Nowadays, we are not doing too many of tibial osteotomies. We prefer to do a partial knee replacement and coming down to the final treatment that is a total knee arthroplasty. That is the commonest thing that is the commonest thing that we do uh, when all the other means of treatment are not working. So all these things are done when uh, these techniques are not helping. So what do we do in a knee replacement? So we are just shaving off this cartilage that is damaged and placing a metal cap on the femur, a metal cap on the tibia, and a polyethylene spacer in between. While doing this, we basically uh, uh, balance the ligaments that are there on the outer side and the inner side and correct the deformity that every person has. So coming down to the advances, so early, the commonest uh, thing is that one thing that we have to understand that I have been doing replacement for the last 18 years. I have not been doing it the same way. I have upgraded myself. Similarly, there is implant design that is upgraded. The implant material has upgraded. The technique that I do for a conservative conventional knee replacement has also upgraded. And the latest technique that is there, latest upgrade gradation that is there is the total in total knee replacement is the robotic knee replacement. So coming down to the implant designs, now we have high flex designs for better uh, flexion, better mobility. Uh, patients are having better mobility. They are having um, uh, uh, able to squat as per Indian standards. But I do not still advise to squat. It is not needed. Um, we have we should have complete movement. If need be, we should be able to do that. But squatting, sitting, cross leg decreases, puts more strain on the joint and decreases the life of the implant. So that is not ideally advanced. We have cruciate retaining. That is uh, there are cruciate retaining implants means we are keeping the ligament intact. Because of that, there is a more natural feel to the knee, better proprioception. Implant material, we, have, we are regularly using cobalt chrome, but now there are other materials which are hypoallergenic and they have a longer life, oxygenium and titanium niobium nitride. The black one is the oxygenium. This is the titanium niobium nitride. That is a gold implant. They have a longer life, better uh, stability as compared to uh, the uh, better uh, uh, life as compared to the uh, cobalt chrome and low friction. So that is the reason why the life of the titanium niobium nitride is longer uh, as compared to the cobalt chrome. Coming down to the minimal invasive techniques. Now, uh, many of the people uh, around, uh, everybody wants a minimal invasive uh, way out. So what does minimal invasive really mean? Does a small scar mean a minimal invasive? 
No, small star is not the only thing that means it is a minimal invasive technique. Minimal invasive means reduced blood loss, lesser soft tissue dissection, which leads to faster rehabilitation and lesser post-operative. So the uh, surgery, which is as a bigger scar, does not mean that it is gone. The skin incision does not matter. The soft tissue dissection, the muscle and the inside soft tissue dissection, when it is less, it means minimal invasive. So that is very important to understand. Ki minimal invasive doesn't mean only a small scar. So that, that is a misnomer. A smaller star means it is a minimal. Sometimes even with smaller stars, there are huge amount of soft tissue dissection done inside and we will not understand. That will give us later bigger problems. So how um, pain management techniques nowadays in uh, the surgery are better? So post-operative, earlier uh, our techniques uh, have evolved so earlier, uh, say uh, seven, ten years back, I used to keep my patient in bed for around a week's time and then start mobilizing, moving and all. Nowadays, I make the patient stand on the on day one, start flexing the knee, extending the knee on day one. This I do basically because once I start doing that, the patient has better mobility, he has more confidence and lesser post-operative pain uh, when he's starting to move earlier. So this is only managed because of my anesthetist. They give uh, good anesthetic uh, ultrasound guided blocks in the adductor canal, which is purely sensory. So no power is lost and patient moves immediately, can move immediately. Coming down to today's topic, that is uh, the technological advances, that is robotic knee replacement. So robotic knee replacement is the latest development that we are seeing in, uh, uh, in our uh, uh, total knee replacement. So what is it? What is what do you mean by doing a robotic knee replacement? So, so does the robot operate or do I operate? So coming down to this, if you see this uh, slide, so the robot is making the bone cuts, but I have to tell the robot what it is to be done. What is to be done? So whenever I am planning a robotic surgery, um, it is basically done one day prior in a CT guided way. So if I come to uh, robots, types of robots that are there, it is either an image-based robot where which we, uh, we need to get a CT scan of the patient done and imageless when we directly, at the time of surgery, we are making uh, marking the bones on the, uh, directly marking the bone at the time of surgery. So which is better, whether uh, the image-based is better or uh, imageless is better. So sometimes people say, you know, uh, why, why an extra CT scan should be needed? But by doing a CT scan, we learn about the bone anatomy better. We know a 3D, we have a 3D picture. I take the CT scan, put it on my laptop and make a planning one day prior to surgery. So once I am able to, once I have a, uh, I do a, rather I do a virtual surgery on my laptop one day prior to surgery. Because of this, I can give better results. I know how much bone is going to get cut, which where uh, I have to dissect the soft tissue and where I have to release uh, a little bit. So all these things, if I have done prior, which gives me a better uh, picture, I am doing robotics. I am doing robotics only because I have want to give better uh, uh, result to my patient or I want to give my patient a consistent result. So that is why uh, robotics is in play. So uh, CT based, I, I feel is better than in a non-CT based uh, robot. So if we ask, uh, if you see, there are quite a few uh, robots there in, uh, the market nowadays, QVS, Striker, Smith & Nephew and Zimmer. So Striker and QVS are the only CT-based robots that are there. They have this thing. Uh, they, for these robots, we require to do a CT. There are different uh, uh, cutting devices on these robots. Out of all these robots, only QVS is a fully automatic robot that is there. Uh, Striker is a semi-automatic. Smith & Nephew is a passive as well as Zimmer is a passive where I have to hold the saw in my own hand and cut the, uh, make the bone cuts. So I'm doing robotics basically um, to make, uh, to reduce the human error while uh, operating. So coming down uh, to uh, the robot that I'm using. So it is basically, there are two parts of that robot. This is the robot with a robotic arm. There is a cutting device here. This is a console that tells me where the robot is cutting, how it is cutting, how deep it is going to cut, whether the cuts are going proper, if there are any bone movements, then it stops. There is an it stops on its own. 
this thing on the top here is an optical tracker. So there are uh, sensors that we apply on the bones, that is the femur and the tibia. So when these sensors are applied, this uh, optical tracker detects where the femur is, where the tibia is. Similarly, there are trackers on the robot and the robotic arm. So it knows where the robot is standing, where the robotic arm is cutting, how deep it is cutting, and accordingly. So when I do, <clears throat> so as I said, this is the main console, uh, this thing, this is the uh, robot robot with an operating software, main controller, robotic arm, a, a, cut, a cutting tool, and an irrigation system. Planner is basically my uh, software on my laptop. One day prior to surgery, I do the planning before uh, this thing. So benefits, as I said, uh, CT, it is a CT based robot. So better surgical planning, precise cuts to a sub millimeter accuracy. So earlier while doing a conventional knee replacement, there are zigs available through which we make the bone cut using a saw. So zigs make, give us a similar, uh, a 9 mm cut or an 8 mm cut or a 7 mm cut. So we can change the amount of uh, cuts that we are making accordingly, according to the patient. But the cuts are depending upon, uh, di the difference is always, al always 2 mm. By this, I can go up to 9.1, 7.1, 8.7.2 uh, millimeter. Even every uh, 0.1 millimeter, I can make a change uh, uh, while planning. So I just... Uh, fix my implant to the native bone that is there while planning and accordingly make the changes. Now there is a op better optical alignment. It's the easiest workflow. I can change whenever I want to accordingly. The, uh, the cuts can be changed. I can make changes while operating. I can uh, differ. If I feel that this is uh, the cut should be changed in this manner, I can do that while the robot is making the cuts. Um, there is the most important thing about this is the real time system monitoring uh, is available. So it freezes it. There is an emergency stop. Whenever there is a slight movement to the bone, the robot stops. This is a very important thing because even if a slight movement while right, the time we are cutting, definitely there is going to be change in the cut path or the depth of the cut. So definitely the bone uh, will cut, get cut more. It stops. It immediately stops even with a slightest movement that is there. Um, at the time of surgery. So as I said, how it works, uh, this is uh, the planning. I get a planning fine one day prior. I know how much the bone is going to get cut, the femur, tibia, how many, how much mm it is going to get cut. These are the images that we see. This is, as I said, as I said the femoral bone, that is the thigh bone. I see how it fits, how the implant is going to fit. Once this is done, I make a approve, I, I approve this uh, plan. Then we go towards a surgical plan. So while doing a surgery, I feed the surgical plan to the computer. I make an incision. I open the joint. Till then, the robot is not uh, doing anything. The robot is behind. I open the joint. I uh, uh, remove. I uh, mark the points again on the femur here and the tibia. This is the second marking. This is read by the optical tracker on uh, at in real time. It makes one more 3D image. This 3D image and the CT 3D image are both superimposed uh, at that at the time of surgery. Then finally, I make a call ki how much um, bone should be cut, uh, whether I may need to make any changes, while I, whether I should uh, rotate the implant, whether the implant should go up and down. So my final aim is to have an equal uh, uh, gap on both sides at the time of surgery. And um, uh, almost one to two mm gap uh, difference should be there minimum in flexion, in equal gap in extension. Uh, this is what normally I uh, I aim at. So this is only achievable while we are doing a robotic surgery. While doing a conventional, there is no means to tell me that there is only a one mm difference or whether there is an equal or an unequal gap or uh, it is just the by the feel that we were we have been going till now. So by the, by, by the field, definitely you will not understand a difference of 1 mm. So the 1 or 2 mm it, uh, looks similar. But by doing this, we definitely have been understanding, yes, definitely, uh, there is uh, a gap balancing that is to be done. We need to change. The biggest advantage is after the surgery, the patient in the recovery room can make the movements at the time of at the time of uh, after the surgery, this is in the post, uh, in, 
in the uh, post operative uh, room that i have asked the patient to do this and this is again thanks to my anesthetist because they are able to uh, give a good anesthesia good adductor block to the patient this is one of my patients who really boosted my confidence this i had operated her on saturday uh, sorry friday and uh, by saturday evening she started walking without walker i have operated both the knees and without walker she is operating uh, walking on the second day so that is really boosted my confidence this was never i was never, never able to achieve with the conventional so really she is a i very i am very thankful to this, this patient she really boosted my confidence in robotics so to summarize um, basically uh, why what what is the difference between robotics and uh, uh, conventional it is more precise and more accurate it increases the life of implant because it is precise and more accurate lesser blood loss lesser bone loss as we are not uh, dissecting the soft tissue we are not opening the medullary cavity of the femoral bone uh, lesser soft tissue dissection less painful so faster recovery and most important that i feel is the repetition of my best results so each and every patient i am able to give the same results so which is which is virtually which is impossible in cases of when i am doing a uh, conventional one i cannot be uh, there, there is always the possibility of some amount of human error where um, uh, i cannot be bang on so if, uh, if i can give my best result by doing this so uh, this is in a very small uh, time i could just summarize whatever uh, uh, just uh, whatever i said is robotics is basically uh, a tool that we are using to bet give better results it doesn't mean that conventional knee replacement which we were doing uh, is bad In patient who requires replacement requires replacement whether you do it by robotics or whether you do it by convention is a secondary clause it is a tool to give better results um it helps us to give better results whether you want to do uh, use robotics or not that is a secondary part everybody should think about that it is a very important thing to understand in not getting operated is more uh bad than not getting oper um, uh, not doing robotics at all I mean, not get uh, then by getting operated by a conventional so get treated that is the most important thing whether you do it by robotics or whether you do it by conventional is a secondary and is a choice of the surgeon as well as uh, the patient so that you should understand so uh, thank you i think we should uh, i'll stop sharing the screen now yes thank you very much doctor uh, the it was a fairly detailed but you know compact presentation and uh, um doctor i have a question which is coming right uh, by me, to me from sms uh, is what is the price differential between a robotic surgery and a regular surgery <clears throat> so definitely there is some amount of uh, price difference the where whether when we are doing a conventional surgery so say approximately uh, for a single knee we were take uh, approximately 2 lakh 2.5 lakhs for the charges so in uh, different different setups uh, around 50 to 80000 is an extra charge that is been uh, put for robotics so around 50 to 80000 is the charge that is uh, extra that patient so the second question that this person has asked mm -hmm. and it's an anonymous attendee is that doctor i don't mind paying a little extra for robotic surgery mm -hmm. but medically which is better to go in for so medically uh, robotics say as i said uh, uh, again majority of our replacement surgery replacement surgeries are for an elderly definitely um, because osteoarthritis is the uh, condition uh, we are treating so medically definitely robotics will be more helpful as we are not doing uh, as i said we, are, we do not uh, enter the medullary cavity while doing a robotic surgery or a computer navigation so complications of uh, uh doing an intramedullary uh, uh, opening an intramedullary cavity like a dvt or an fat embolism are also avoided by doing uh, for uh, for an elderly age 
plus blood loss is less bone loss is blood loss is less which is always better so frankly speaking in my 200 odd knees uh, that i have done uh, with robotics in the last one year uh, i have not required to give any patient any blood transfusion even for a bilateral case uh, that i have done uh, in uh, using robotics so that is uh, how it is more safer uh, to do uh, in an elderly age group, even for a high 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 risk medical thank you doctor we have a question from an anonymous attendee says yes. who says my wife who is 74 from bangalore has developed bilateral osteoarthritis mm -hmm. in the right knee joint. The left joint is not so much affected. She has been advised knee joint replacement for both the knees. <clears throat> Does a robot-assisted uh, surgery lead to better results? We are concerned about the likely problems during and after the procedure. We need your guidance in taking the right decision. So as I said, um, getting treated is more important. Uh, robotics will help you further uh, in getting better, getting better results. Uh, post robotics, as I said, there is earlier mobilization. Uh, the post operative pain is less. Uh, the alignment and everything is perfect. So normally patients are able to move faster. Uh, they are able to come back to the normal life faster as compared to a conventional knee replacement. Um, as I said, there is lesser blood loss, so patients, specifically patients with who are having to undergo a bilateral knee replacement, both the knees. It is always better to go ahead uh, and do a robotic, um, which is definitely will be helpful. And the time required for the same, uh, for a robotic or a conventional is one and the same. Uh, the post-operative uh, rehab time is less. The hospital stay also becomes less in a few patients. So that depends from patient to patient and age to uh, upon the age of the patient and the comorbidities. Again, if the patient is having uh, definite cardiac comorbidities or any other comorbidities, then sometimes we go a little bit slow post-operative. But otherwise, uh, with regular patients, definitely the stay in the hospital becomes less by doing robotics. Doctor, this is a question which is not exactly on the topic that we have, but this is from Hiren Dan, who uh, says, I'm 65 years female. Mm -hmm. uh, how good is the injectable gel helpful for knee, knee pain? Right. So basically, um, injectable gel, there are, see, there are two kinds of injections that are normally uh, any doctor advises. One is a steroid and second is the injectable gel. So these gels or steroids basically help only in mild to moderate kind of arthritis and not in severe osteoarthritis. That is the basic thing that everybody has to understand. When there is severe osteoarthritis, which is not relieved by medicine, gel is not going to help. These are costly injections and we are have to enter uh, the knee joint for getting the injections. So one most important thing that I normally advise uh, while taking an injection is that it should be in a very clean environment. Go to the minor OTA and do not do it in the OPD premises. I normally prefer it to give in a minor OT, clean the joint and then inject for a moderate osteoarthritis. For moderate, moderate osteoarthritis, it gives good amount of relief for six to eight months or maybe a year's time. Uh, but for severe osteoarthritis, normally they tend to fail and after uh, even say sometimes patients ha have no relief at all or maximum they have relief is for a month, which is uh, too less for uh, anybody entering your joint. So, which has complications. So, if you are entering the joint, uh, there are, there can be complications like infections if it is done in an unsterile environment. That is, you have to take care. Right. Thank you, doctor. Um, we have a question from uh, Mr. Anil Kumar Chopra, who is 73. He was advised knee replacement, but he walks three kilometers and does yoga and other exercises. There's little pain. One leg, is it advisable to go for surgery? And what is, you know, you've explained what is the cost of robot, robotic surgery and uh, which are the facilities available in a city like New Delhi? I'm sure there are quite a few facilities in New Delhi, but you could perhaps just name a couple of them. So and, basically, um, uh, if he is walking for three kilometers per day without pain, without anything, then definitely, uh, I don't know uh, whether you are requiring a replacement. Uh, as I said in my first slide, it's, it's a key, the replacement is done for a painful knee. 
if you do not have pain definitely replacement is not needed it doesn't uh, we do not do replacement for a bad x ray only the patient must have uh, pain and the activity should be restricted if that is there then only go ahead and do replacement if you are not able to move, keep keep up with your regular uh, lifestyle in delhi there are quite a few places where uh, robotics are uh, I mean, I think Max is one of the places where it is being done regularly. What is Delhi? What is Delhi doesn't have, but Max is definitely having one. And uh, I think uh, Doctor uh, Gaurav Khera, one of he's a friend of mine, is there with Apollo. So he is doing uh, robotics now. There. You know, for those of you who were here, one of course is the fact that uh, this session we edited. The video of this session and the takeaways, which is written by a, a, a medical practitioner, will be available on the website. So you can look at Dr. Bohr's presentation all over again. You know, some of the finer details that you may have missed out while you were watching, you can see again. And of course, uh, you know, as you know, that Dr. Bohr is available at the Fortis Hirnani Hospital in uh, Navi Mumbai. He is available and you can reach him for a teleconsult. Uh, and I'm sure he would be only too happy to uh, take your call. But, you know, today, orthopedic surgery is available across the country. Uh, as always, as I mentioned over here, is that some of the advice that we are giving over here is, of course, an advice. There's nothing to, uh, to you know, beat the actual physical interaction with the doctor with your specific query. So you should uh, do that. And uh, some of the doctors whom we invite over here, most of the doctors whom we invite here are available for a TAE consult. And you can always reach across to Dr. Pramod Bhor at uh, the hospital and he will be only too happy to uh, uh, advise you. Uh, doctor, we have a question from, and, and, and doctor, you will appreciate that uh, the session here is for senior citizens, and uh, uh, you know when we start when we started this session, we were not very sure whether senior citizens above the age of sixty will be uh, participating. But today, even as I am speaking with you, I have a question from somebody age sixty six, somebody age eighty eight, somebody age seventy, uh, and we've had quite a few questions already. So these are senior citizens who are there and they are are uh, you know and they are they are asking questions to you on uh, live on zoom and um, it is amazing that they are all here and they connect with us many of them connect with us every week and uh, uh, you know they, and they are all looking for advice from doctors like yourself and uh, so that's a great it's a great thank initiative as well thank you thank you very much doctor We've been doing this from the from June 2020, and we've had over 150 sessions, and um, uh, we've had quite a few doctors from Fortis who've been here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to ask this question from Aruna Devi. Uh, Aruna Devi ji is 70 years old. She has a pacemaker. She asks, "May I go for CT scan? I have a knee problem since 10 years. Can I get it treated? Does robotic surgery help her?" So she is. Uh, how old is she? 70. So, yes, definitely. Uh, so, uh, as I said uh, in the earlier, the X-ray will clean the diagnosis, and uh, CT and everything uh, helps uh, basically for planning, further planning. So, uh, if uh, the CT that I'm doing is basically, uh, I'm using it in my software uh, that is there along with the robot, and that helps me plan to plan. Otherwise, in when when we are doing conventional knee replacement, we are doing uh, all the planning, uh, taking uh, all with only with the X-ray. So, for a seventy-year-old person, definitely uh, she requires. If she requires replacement, robotic will help her. Uh, there is no contraindication not doing robotics. Uh, plus, uh, getting a CT will definitely give her more information and uh, everything uh, regarding uh, how her osteoarthritis is progressed. Thank you very much. We have a question from Mr. Bridge Dugal. He is 80 years old. He says for the last 10 years, he has been having problems in his spine and in the neck area and L4, L5. Right. Physiotherapy 
and he's living his life. Uh, his question is, what can be done to help me by doing robotic surgery? So again, uh, you are doing uh, physiotherapy and ex doing regular exercises and that is helping you. So when that is helping you, why should you go for any surgery? Number one. Okay. So uh, again, robotic surgery is uh, robotic assisted surgery. It is not robotic surgery. It is always robotic assisted surgery. The robot is assisting the surgeon. So robotic assisted surgery will only help when there is any surgical indication. Spine robots as well. If uh, spine surgery is indicated. If you are better with basic physiotherapy and exercises and you are able to do everything on your own, not needed to go ahead with any surgery. So no surgery, when it is not indicated, then no surgery is going to help you. It is, as I said, a bad x-ray is not the only reason why we are operating. It's the pain that we are operating. If the patient is asymptomatic, no surgery or no treatment is needed. When you have a symptom, when you have a problem, yes, robotics in spine is also available when you have to put Specifically, when fixation is needed. Uh, so, uh, for a spine, there are many, many surgeries. So, basically, uh, when we are, so spine, we can do a discectomy, we can do a posterior laminectomy, we can do a spine fixation. That is, we can fix the spine with screws. So, robotic helps in fixation of the spine screws. Uh, so, whenever you require a spine fixation, then robotic comes into play. So, now, uh, in, in his case, I don't think so. I um, mean, I don't know what the thing is. First is, you have to come to a diagnosis by doing an MRI, by doing, uh, rather investigating and examining the patient and then whether the patient really requires a surgery. If the patient is requiring a surgery, then uh, definitely either conventional robotic microlumbar or whatever uh, microscopic surgery may be needed. Then accordingly, it can be planned. So basic is physiotherapy exercise, then you will be all right. We have a question from Vijayalakshmi Ganduri who has seen your presentation very carefully. She says the operated person in the video that you showed wasn't using a walker. Yeah. Also, is it not used deliberately? What is the <clears throat> follow-up schedule after? So, uh, so that is what um, nowadays, the most of my patients post uh, surgery, and as I said, she that patient gave me a quite a good amount of confidence. So she said, I don't want to use the walker. I let me start without walking without walk. That was day one. Day, that is, I operated her on Friday, Saturday, she started doing Friday morning. So, my normally uh, rehab is this way. And uh, morning, if I'm operating, it's a unilateral or a bilateral knee, so single or both knees. By the end of the day, that is three to four hours once the anesthesia wears off, the patient is sitting by the edge of the bed and I make them to stand minimal. So patient stands, he can move around a little bit if the patient is willing to. A little bit of walking is allowed. Second day onwards, again, flexion, extension of the knee, regular exercises, and patient starts walking with the help of a walker. Third day, walking with the help of a walker, or if the patient is confident enough, then I ask them to leave the walker. Third day, step climbing also starts, and patient starts commuting, going to the washroom, using the commode because the commode is a bit lower in lower setting. So, so if you see a hospital beds, they are always higher. Uh, the patient has to go home after four to five days. So while going home, he should be or he she should be able to uh, regularly move in the house. So I make it a point that there is commode training on the third day. The patient is able to sit on the commode on the third day. Fourth day, the patient normally gets discharged. Uh, that is how the rehabilitation protocol is. Continue with your exercises for the next one, one and a half month. Uh, so normally, maximum uh, with my conventional surgeries, also patients used to use walker only for around maximum my patient, any patient who has used walker is for three months, three weeks, uh, not more than that. If they are exercising regularly and doing, depending upon age of age of the patient, some patients uh, not leave walker even after conventional surgery in around ten to twelve days. But majority of the patients with robotics have have started leaving the walker within a week. They are going home without walkers, either using a stick or something. So that is basically because of the lesser pain, maybe a better progression because I normally conserve the cruciate ligament as well, the posterior cruciate. So they have a better uh, feel to the joint. And that is how uh, we have started uh, mobilizing. That is why I took that video. My patient 
has had been working that she gave me a major confidence boost yes that is that is an advantage of using a robot that this was during my the early days when i started using the robot when you see patients doing that you feel better you feel uh, okay yes this is something we are which is really useful right um, thank you doctor we have a question from shamla ravi but you kind of answered it the question was how long does it take to come back to normalcy which you said after a, a robotic knee replacement surgery uh, doctor the question which is there her second part of the question is the success rate compared to the conservative method you know you her, her one other question is the economical uh, factor which you answered but in terms of success rate which has a better success rate is the conventional form more successful or is the robotic form more successful for instance if one were to come to you you know and then the both the options are there and if one has to make a decision on what to go in for what should one go in for so uh, coming down to uh, the main question whether uh, conventional tkr should be done or uh, we should go ahead with robotics so conventional has been there it's always been helpful so why robotics now the why robotics the main question the answer is uh, while uh, we we have been doing conventional since many many years and it has been rather successful my patients are also coming to uh, uh, terms with it to, uh, to get a tkr done so earlier 15 years back nobody used to for a tkr i don't want to do any knee replacement surgery but nowadays patients are more receptive towards a replacement surgery because uh, they know it is going to help even though we have been doing consistently good with that but there is still uh, some amount of people around 10 to 15% who have still amount some amount of pain or some this thing which uh, some discomfort uh, post at a knee replacement so to reduce that robotics is come into play because see having a consistent result is very important having a consistent uh, fit of the implant better fit of the implant better alignment is very important which is where robotics as i showed in my slide ki uh, balancing 10 10 on both sides is only possible when i see a robot so whether whether i am able to do uh, having a 10 mm gap on medial side and uh, on the inner side and a 12 mm gap on the lateral side i will never be able to assess by not using um a conventional by using a conventional this implant but by using a robotics i am able to assess that i am able to assess that whether the gaps are equal on both sides which is up to a millimetric sub millimetric accuracy so this accuracy is the way um, the robotics is helping us and it is helping us to give better results so um this is this is a, the newest technique that is there. and to answer the question uh, one more thing even uh, uh, i am so confident over robotics i have operated my relative my uh, uh, relative my close my, my mother in law with using a robotic uh, knee replacement so i am that confident on this so i have not done a conventional for her i have done a robotic for her so that i think should answer whether i i am uh, more uh, comfortable with conventional or a robotic so when it concerns your mother in law you obviously are more careful than anybody else in the world doctor tell me something you know robotics is robotics right it's it's about science and technology and all of that right. are you happy with the the technology that is there available are are the you know technology providers for robotics so at the end of the day it's a technology thing right if exactly. you know if you were doing it with your hands uh, of course you are also using your hands with robotics but if you were using your regular conventional form you were using your hands and you were using your brain power and all of that which you are also using in robotics but are you happy with the technology progress that is being made in the field for instance there are quite a few uh, technology providers who are there there is uh, a company like merrill which is there as far as uh, uh, this is concerned are you happy with what what is being done so uh, this uh, robotics is not there only in the last one or two years it has been there since last quite a few years so uh, first robotic surgery was done in 2000 something 2000 basically so um, more so in the last 8 to 10 years 
uh, as I have uh, already discussed in my slide earlier, there are a few four companies available in now five companies that are providing robotics in India. But um, uh, this is uh, a few only give a totally or a completely automatic robot. And there are regular software updates that they are been doing. So it is very important to upgrade uh, uh, the software as well. Plus, uh, what is available? So as I said, a CT-based robot and a non-CT-based robot. A CT-based robot, so the question is why I want to do a robotics. I want to do robotics to give better results and to go uh, in a more precise way and to give a 100% uh, similar result what I had given to my earlier question. So that planning only can be achieved when I'm doing a CT scan. It cannot plan on table at, uh, while doing a surgery. So that is where a CT based robot normally uh, trumps over a non CT based. Robot. So a non CT based robot has been there since many, many years. So the technology has advanced and come towards a CT based robot. And nowadays we are using CT based robot, which are fully automatic or compassion. So definitely technology now that has come this is there to stay. The robot that was there in 2000 is still not been used. The robot that is there now uh, has been upgraded around seven, eight times. And then this is the final thing that they have uh, come to uh, show us. So that is what we are using. now, And the technology will be upgraded in terms of software. That is what is there. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh... Dr. Pramod Bhor for this presentation. Obviously, uh, technology has uh, is existent uh, in ex is in existence right now, and uh, uh, you know we are fortunate that uh, uh, you know a lot of medical technology companies have embraced it, and doctors like yourself who are uh, conventional uh, joint replacement surgeons are embracing it. The fact that you could you did it for your mother-in-law uh, is testimony of the fact that you have, uh, you know, you have trusted the, the, the technology. Thank you very much for taking time off uh, for our readers here. And to all of you over here, as always, the uh, video, the edited video will be there on our Seniors Today website on Monday evening with our takeaways from this session written by a, a, a medical practitioner. So this will be there. And um, you know you can take the views of uh, Dr. Pramod Bhor via Portasir Nani Hospital in, in Navi Mumbai. So you can always do that. And uh, we'll be back next Saturday. Next Saturday, uh, the 2nd of September with a session on Health Live at Senior Today once again. Thank you very much for being there. You can always register uh, for uh, our sessions in advance. Uh, Seniors Today website is there. We are in our fourth year. You know the content is available free of cost. The magazine is available free of cost. You can access all our content, attend all our sessions. We have also part of the Seniors Today uh, platform is also the Evergreen Club uh, app. You can download the Evergreen Club app which is there on your Android and your Apple uh, iOS devices. You can download that, enrich yourself, entertain yourself. And once again, thank you very much, Dr. Pramod Bhot, for, uh, uh, for this session, for taking time off. Thank you, thank you. Thanks a lot. And um, thank you very much uh, for uh, the team at Ad Factors for facilitating this. Uh, once again, all of you over here, uh, please do track the takeaways and the edited video. I know some of you have may, may have missed out on the finer details when Dr. was making the presentation, but you can watch it once again on uh, our website on Monday evening. And I'm sure you will benefit a lot. Thank you very much, Dr. Bohr. Thank, Thank you very you. much for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Right now and press the bell icon. Never miss an update.